Russia's President Vladimir Putin has vowed to crash what he called an armed mutiny in a televised address. It comes after Yevgeny Pigozhin, head of the Wagner mercenary group, said he wanted to oust Russia's military leadership. The Russian army says it is carrying out combat measures in the southern region of Voronezh. Further south, Prigozhin says his Wagner forces have taken control of key military sites in the city of Rostov-on-Don. This includes the region's military headquarters, a key logistical base for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Prigozhin denies, however, he's staging a coup. Meanwhile, footage has emerged of an explosion in the city of Voronezh. Reports suggest Wagner forces entered the city early on Saturday. The helicopter, uh, helicopters uh, were seen flying low over the city shortly before the blast. As Russian authorities declare a counter-terrorist operation in Moscow, Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin says his troops are prepared to die for the cause. Residents in Rostov-on-Don awoke to startling scenes on Saturday. Mercenaries from the Wagner group stationed on the streets. Their leader, Evgeny Prigozhin, says he wants to oust Russia's military leadership, marking a significant escalation of infighting between the two sides. President Vladimir Putin urged Wagner mercenaries to abandon the uprising and said decisive action will be taken to stabilize the situation in Rostov-on-Don in a televised address. I repeat, any internal turmoil is a deadly threat to our statehood, to us as a nation. This is a blow to Russia and to our people, and we'll take tough action to protect the fatherland from such a threat. All those who deliberately embarked on the path of betrayal, who prepared an armed rebellion, embarked on the path of blackmail and terrorist methods, will suffer inevitable punishment. They will answer before the law and before our people. Prigozhin has accused Russia's military leadership of launching strikes on his troops and says they are deceiving the president. They still hope that they can win this war. But as long as there is no management, no military successes, the leadership of the Ministry of Defense is carefully deceiving the president. And the president receives those reports that do not correspond to reality in any way. There are two agendas, one on the ground, the other on the president's desk. The Wagner Group has played a key role in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Emboldened by gains on the battlefield, like here in Bakhmut, Prigozhin's criticism of the Kremlin had been growing ever louder. That criticism now becoming a major threat to Moscow and its entire military leadership. DW's former Moscow bureau chief Yuri Reshetto joins us now from Riga, as DW is banned from reporting in Russia. Hello, Yuri. What more can you tell us about the situation in the southern Russian city of Rostov-on-Don? Well, according to all the reports, so we can assume earlier that the situation in the city remains relatively calm. People are holding out uh, reportedly in the centre, close to the mayor's building, where tanks of Prigozhin are reportedly located. Since uh, today earlier uh, morning, uh, a video is circulating of a street musician being prevented from playing further by a man from Prigozhin. This shows that at least in the centre, the armed men now have power, the men of Prigozhin. But outside of the centre, no one is said to have noticed anything about Prigozhin's people and his so-called March of Justice, which he announced last night. Uh, another video has been published just a few minutes ago showing a convoy of uh, alleged Chechen military heading towards Rostov. It's hard to say what kind of video it is and uh, if it's real a convoy or not. But in another city, in Voronezh, you said it, a little closer to Moscow, there was a fire in a large oil refinery and also a military helicopter crashed reportedly there. Who it belonged to, Prigozhin or the regular army, it's uh, hard to say. Certainly a lot coming through. Now, Prigozhin says he wants to get troops to Moscow. How likely is that? 
Well, he is at least very determined to reach Moscow, and he's added several times, and as we see now, he keeps his word. Uh, but what's left for him? He is now considered a serious criminal in Russia who faces up to 20 years in prison for the armed mutiny. Uh, President Putin openly calls him a criminal now. Posters advertising the Wagner private army are now being torn down all over Russia. All this is nothing more than a dismantling of Putin's former favorite. Uh, there is no worse enemy than a former friend. Uh, I don't know where, uh, if the two Putin and Prigozhin were ever friends, but Putin made Prigozhin's career possible. And Prigozhin used to be Putin's man. That's why the Russian president spoke of a betrayal and a slap in the back in his televised speech earlier. Yeah, we know what seems to be happening at a top level, but how is this mutiny received by the population in Russia? Well, the people of Russia have been uh, war-weary for a very, very long time, Eddie. Uh, there are very many Russians who are against the war, but dare not speak out against it to protest because they have been extremely intimidated. Uh, there are draconian laws in Russia for saying no to war and long prison sentences. So that's why many people will certainly think that someone finally dares to stand up against the regime, even if we can't call Mr. Prigozhin anything but a fighter for freedom and democracy. Uh, at the at the moment, however, people seem to be very frustrated and uh, disoriented, disori disoriented and don't know how the whole thing will end. The most important thing at the moment is uh, the regular army and whose side uh, it will be on. Okay. DW's Yuri Rosetto. Thank you very much. A closer look now at the man who claims to be marching his mercenary forces onto Russian soil in an apparent open rebellion. Yevgeny Prigozhin. Not a day goes by without commentary from Russia's most vocal oligarch, Yevgeny Prigozhin, on the war in Ukraine. More than just an opinionated billionaire, he's a major player in the conflict as commander of the Wagner Group, a private army of mercenaries. The war in Ukraine is not the first for Wagner. They've been active further afield, fighting in Libya, Syria and Mali, gaining a reputation for brutality along the way. Prigozhin thinks they can do a better job than what he feels is a disorganized Russian army. We started this wonderful special operation on February 24, 2022. We stomped around for a month and then came to a standstill. We got our butts kicked from many directions, and what did we see? An army that is creaking. No management, no training, no weapons. You can't understand it? It's a total mess. But how did Yevgeny Prigozhin gain such prominence? The St. Petersburg native had a troubled start in life, spending most of his 20s behind bars for robbery and theft. After his release, he set up a chain of hot dog stalls in his hometown and earned enough money to open a restaurant in the mid-90s. That new venture allowed him to mix with Russia's high and mighty, including Vladimir Putin. Later, Putin even started taking his foreign guests there, earning Prigozhin the nickname Putin's chef. But it was only after Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014 that signs began to emerge that Prigozhin was no ordinary businessman. Prigozhin has since not only become a public figure as one of Putin's confidants, but he's become a politician in his own right. And over the course of the war, he's ruffled feathers among Russia's elite. The oligarch has constantly blamed Chief of Staff Valery Gerasimov and Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu for not providing ammunition to Wagner. He's even gone as far as threatening them with dire consequences. I'm requesting Shoigu Sergei to provide ammunition immediately. In case of his refusal, I consider it necessary to inform the Supreme Commander-in-Chief about the existing major problems in the Wagner PMC around Bakhmut. Cracks have emerged in Prigozhin's relationship with the Kremlin. He might enjoy leeway from Putin when it comes to the war in Ukraine, but it appears his growing political ambitions are not welcome. The gap has been growing between the role Putin assigned him and the political place he believes he deserves. Now it seems 
He's looking to change that. For further analysis, we're joined now by Domitila Sagramoso, Senior Lecturer in Security and Development at King's College London. Hello, Domitila. Now, according to British intelligence agencies, the uprising of the Wagner mercenary force is the, quote, biggest challenge in recent times for the Russian state. What do you think? Uh, yes, I would agree. I think the situation is uh, very serious. I mean, this is a, a real challenge to uh, the, the regime of Vladimir Putin. Uh, what started as an effort to um, change the leadership of the Ministry of Defense and the Armed Forces uh, may turn up into a direct challenge to uh, the authorities in the Kremlin, to Putin himself. And it is not clear how this is going to unravel. I mean, to what extent um, are the forces and the, the security structures going to be loyal to the Putin regime? To what extent are they going to be able to challenge uh, the advances of Prigozhin? Uh, to what extent uh, are they going to be ready to enter in some kind of negotiations with him? All this is, at the moment, you know, an open question. Yeah, it sounds like that. You know, Prigozhin says he will not surrender. Has the Russian government underestimated the Wagner group, you think? I don't think so. I think that uh, there was a clear understanding that Wagner was posing a challenge to the structures of, uh, of the Ministry of Defense and, and the Armed Forces. And this explains why over the past months, and especially during the time when fighting was very fierce around Bakhmut, uh, there were so many sort of... Um, uh, pr problems with the provision of ammunition to uh, the Wagner group. And the Wagner group was complaining, and Prigozhin were com was complaining that he was not receiving sufficient ammunition. So I think, and equipment. So I think already this was a time when, in my view, the Ministry of Defense uh, was trying to weaken and subordinate uh, this, uh, this group to uh, its own structures. Uh, and I think that's the moment when uh, the challenges from Prigozhin started and his rhetoric became a lot more violent and he began challenging, um, you know, the structures of, of uh, the Ministry of Defense and the Armed Forces more directly and eventually also even challenging Putin and, uh, the, you know, the rationale behind this operation. So I think that uh, it is clear that uh, for the Putin leadership, uh, you know, this is a serious challenge. I mean, the big question is how are they going to address this and to what extent are they going to be able to, uh, you know, to, um, to subdue this uh, rebellion and this mutiny without yeah. significant bloodshed? I think that's a, a fair question. But also to add to that, how long do you think this internal conflict could go on for? It's very difficult today to make any predictions. I think it's going to be very hard to know, uh, you know, much will depend on what's happening on the ground. I think that the forces of Prigozhin, which may not be as strong as he uh, alleges, uh, because many of his forces uh, were um, deplo are deployed in Africa, many were lost uh, during the campaigns in the Donbass. You know, a lot will depend on how much support he gets from rank and file soldiers or from um, sort of non-commissioned officers and potentially from, uh, you know, uh, higher echelons of the of the military and security structures. Uh, so how many forces are going to side with him? That will determine, you know, uh, how successful he's going to be. Uh, I think that there's going to be caution on the side of the, of the Russian leadership, but at the same time, Putin, I think, is not going to... Uh, easily sort of surrendered to the requests of Prigozhin. Mm. So mm. it's really a clash of wills between Putin and Prigozhin. And I think it's it's still a bit early to say on what side, you know, uh, this is going to, uh, you know, how it is going to end up. Okay. But I think the situation is, is sort of unraveling at the moment. It is indeed. What does all this mean for the war in Ukraine? That's a very interesting question. On the one hand, we know that uh, the withdrawal of, of Wagner forces from the, the fronts in the Donbass might create, uh, you know, some weaknesses or in, in, in those parts where they were present. Uh, also, forces might be required internally in Russia, so that might complicate uh, some of the military operations in Ukraine. But at the same time, we must remember that uh, you know, the, the whole um, sort of defensive and uh, fortification lines that were built up over the last 
uh, several months, you know, are still there, the minefields, uh, you know, all the defensive positions. And I think that, uh, you know, a lot will depend on on the, the sort of the, the officials and the officers on the ground in Ukraine and to what extent Ukraine is going to be able to uh, exploit weaknesses, I think is still something to be seen. But it certainly plays in Ukraine's favor. And, you know, Ukraine might try to figure out how it can exploit uh, you know, weaknesses along the defensive line. I mean, the paradox that this is coming at a moment when, at least from the Russian point of view, they were not doing so badly in Ukraine. Uh, they, the, the perception, rightly or wrongly, in, in, in Russia and Moscow was that, you know, they were managing to withstand, you know, uh, the Ukrainian counteroffensive, at least initially. Uh, as we know, the Ukrainians were now targeting more the lines of communication and weakening the supply lines for the Russian forces. But there wasn't a route as, uh, you know, many had, had hoped. So I think that it's interesting, you know, that this is actually happening at a moment yeah. when there isn't a complete collapse of the front. So, right. you know, we can't from this assume that now the front is going to collapse. But, it, you know, I, I think there is going to be an impact on the front lines for sure. Okay. Domitila Sagramoso from King's College, London. Thank you.